and to another one soon. Friday night is the youth group meeting here. That's every Friday except the first Friday of the month. So they meet here. Awesome time for the youth junior high and senior high to join and to just fellowship, have a good time, and get in the word. Uh, Saturdays we have... Oh, hello. Oh, there we go. Poema. Uh, so our, our arts ministry, dance right now, hula, um, and incorporating all kinds of things open to whatever the Lord wants to do as far as using our abilities, using our artistic gifts to praise Jesus. So we want to uh, praise the Lord with all things here, whether it's technology or our arts or abilities or speaking or music or uh, working, whatever it is, we want to do it as unto the Lord. So that's Saturdays. Um, and then we have coming soon Operation Christmas Child. So we do this every year, OCC, and we uh, prepare gifts. These gifts go all over the world. Last year we had the record, record number of boxes, which I, I believe was 100. Yeah, so we had about 100 boxes. 200, okay. So all I know is the, the, the goal for this year is 250. So, um, but we would rather actually just focus on, on quality. You know, we could go to the dollar store and throw a bunch of junk in there and get 250. But, you know, it would be better to get like, you know, a soccer ball or, you know, some quality thing, some good socks or something like that. That'll go a long way for uh, just kids around the world in need. So these go all over the world and we like to be involved in that. Um, we'll have packing parties and everything. And then uh, Thanksgiving is coming up, so we have a potluck here on Thanksgiving. This is a time to celebrate. More information will be coming on this shortly. And I um, believe that's it. Yo, and the Connect Center in the back. Any questions, anything? Maybe, uh, you know, people that missed announcements, they want to follow up, see what's going on. We have the Connect Center in the back. We have the website to go on. And uh, more options uh, coming soon as far as just keeping everyone connected about what's going on. So uh, that's it. Why don't we pray? Father, we thank you for this morning. God, we thank you for your grace in our life. God, we thank you that you have created us, God, to worship you. That's why we're here. That's why we exist. God is to worship the God of all truth. God, and I pray that we would do that now, Lord, together as we gather for those that are still on their way, God, that they would get here safely, Lord, that we would have an undivided mind this morning, God, to focus on you, Lord, as, as Claudio will be bringing the word and as we worship now, Lord, I pray, God, that you would just be glorified in, in this time. Lord, I pray that you would do the work in our hearts and our souls, God, that you want to do this morning. God, nothing can hinder you from saving by many or by few. Lord, nothing can hinder you from, spe from speaking directly to our lives this morning, God. So I pray that you would do that, Father. And we pray that this morning the name of Jesus would be lifted up as we, as we worship you. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You guys can uh, feel free to stand up or, or sit down, just whatever, whatever you're comfortable with this morning as we worship. Holy hands, 
Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever bring. We're here for you. We're here for you. next two songs that um, just the words that we sang um, would be would be true in our lives we know that um, that you you love every every human being you've created um, believer non-believer um, just wherever we're at um, that you love us you're reaching out to us and uh, I just pray that um, we would all choose to to build our lives on on the one that um, that truly cares for us the most and, and the one that created us and the one that um, has high high hopes and dreams for us. And um, I just pray that um, this morning that we would just um, rest in your love for us, rest in, in uh, the finished work um, that you've done for us in, in taking away our sin um, and giving us a way to be made, made whole and, and made righteous and 
and just leading us um, in the way we should go. And so I just pray as we ne- as we sing these next two songs that um, that we would we would just rest in you. Um, we would not try to. We know that we we don't need to try to perform or try to um, do do things to earn your approval, um, but um, that you love us, you um, you approve of us um, as we as we've seen what you've done for us on the cross. And um, I just pray that uh, all of us would choose to rest in that. All of us would choose to um, see your great love for us. And uh, um, so I just pray as we sing these next two songs that we'll just be able to rest in you and, and worship you um, in this time.
that one more time. Thank you that your love is a firm foundation for us. I just pray for anyone here today that, that may not trust that. I you know sometimes it's hard to trust um, someone you can't see and um, someone you can't feel all the time. But um, God, I just pray that you'd meet each one of us where we're at, that you'd show us your love, that you'd show us that you're, you're trustworthy and faithful. And um, I just pray all of us, we need to daily renew that trust, um, but I pray for the person here today who finds it hard to, to trust you because that's been all of us at one point, and I just pray that, um, that you'd show them your faithfulness, you'd show them your trustworthiness and uh, your great love for them, um, just, just as your word says, as we were sinners, while we were spitting in your face, while we were mocking you, while we were just going our own way after sin, um, and even while we still do in our lives, we still still make mistakes. We still run after sin sometimes. But you love us. You continue to reach out for us, and uh, you continue to call us to build build our lives on you. So I just pray that we would just continue to respond to that. Seek you this morning. Just sing one more song.
We just thank you for this time um, just to be able to worship you and um, we pray that you would uh, just continue to, to speak to us today and and uh, just continue to um, just work on each one of us um, and I just pray that uh, just as uh, Claudio brings a message that you would uh, just speak through him and, and speak to each one of our hearts um, through your word and and I uh, just pray that um, continue to to draw us um, closer to yourself today and, and reveal um, more of who you who you are um, today, and I pray that um, just uh, so you would reinforce um, the the views we have of you that are that are true, and and you would um, just break down any any views of you that that may be untrue or or lies we've believed about you and um, in your relationship with us. Uh, I pray that you would. Um, just work on that today, um, just with each one of us. And I just pray this in your name. Amen. Go ahead and uh, greet one, greet someone around you. All right, all right, all right. Good morning. Welcome to Calvary. There's more of that where that came from after service. Well, I'm excited this morning to uh, hear from uh, Pastor Elder here, Claudio Catena. Uh, we were, yeah, yeah, there you go. Woo! Claudio. We we're uh, so excited this morning that we drove four hours straight from Tahoe to be here <laughs> to hear Claudio speak. But uh, Claudio is a pastor here. He's an elder and uh, just a blessing in, in my life, a blessing in the life of this church. Um, so strong. And m most of you know him and God's done a tremendous thing in his life. So uh, we're excited to, to hear him bring the word and uh, hope, hope to do that more, do this more often. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Thank you, brother. Woo. I just, uh, I love how God prepares the hearts of his people through the music. And that worship was, was awesome. Uh, prepared my heart. It shows the sovereignty of God and his truths, as brother shared. So before I start, let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day. Thank you for giving us the breath of life. Thank you for the 
trials, Lord Jesus, that we go through daily, but the truths that you bring to us through your people, through circumstances, and we stand by you, Lord. You're the only way that can help situations, Father. You're sovereign, and thank you for salvation. In Jesus' name. Okay, need to put my glasses on because I don't see that well. It's north of 50. But Ann and I, my wife, which is here today, I'm blessed, just got back from Colorado. And I was able to study and see God's creation out in the woods, up in the mountains. So today we're going to focus on Isaiah 40. If you need a Bible, you raise your hand and the ushers will bring you a Bible. If you have one, amen to that. So I'm going to read the scriptures first. And we're going to start Isaiah 27 to 31. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my just claim is passed over by my God? Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles and shall, shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. <clears throat> that is God's truths. And uh, I'm going to start with an introduction. So as Isaiah being a prophet, uh, th this he started his ministry 740 B.C. And uh, he was convicted by his own sin and the people and God's people. And for over 40 years, as many other prophets shared, saying the same thing, repent, come to, come to God. That's where uh, he's the only way out through situations. This is just prior to the God's people being held in captivity for over 70 years. So he was prophesying and telling the people to turn from your wicked ways. And, um, and the, some of the faithful ones that were there were hearing. So I just want to jump back to, as Isaiah uh, shares this, uh, I'm going to go back to uh, 30, chapter 39, verse 6. He is telling uh, the sharing about the, what's going to be coming with the upcoming captivity. Chapter uh, 39, verse 6. Behold, the day is coming when, when all that is in your house and what your fathers have accumulated until this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord. So th this, uh, this was an eye-opener to, to what the people were, were about to, to go through. And, uh, and, and what, was, what was going to be Upcoming, the trials and tribulations. Today, I'm going to focus on uh, three points. One of the points is that God is all-knowing, and two, God is faithful, and, and he's always able, and God is ready to hear us and available. So as prior to this, there was 
prosperity, and uh, God then chose his prophet to share with King uh, to what was going to happen. And so he was preparing his people for uh, the captivity in Babylon, and uh, um, this approaching pro- prophecy was, was of doom, despair. And the people, prior to being captive, and uh, the, the distance from, from uh, leaving their homeland and not facing what was going to be uh, for 70 years. Um, and one of the, one of the uh, amazing things that God is always... Um, Faithful, and as as the people went, as we go back to the first, they they were doubting. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my just claim is passed over my God? They were saying, Okay, God is checked out in our lives, but it wasn't God's checking out. God was so uh, waiting for his people to come to him and repent. And uh, they were doubting his. They thought God wasn't hearing their, their um, plea, but he was always there. They were the ones that were moving away. Um, and those Jews that were still trying to serve the Lord needed encouragement and comfort. And so... As I was studying this, this also goes with our everyday living for Christ. We're going to have different seasons, okay? And, and I need to confess, some days I come with doubt. And if we cannot be honest, this is why we have a, a, a community, a church setting of brothers and sisters. There's... there's a, as I was studying this, Brother Raja and his family speaks volumes. He's going through a major trial. But God's sovereign. And the joy I get with my brother and Sharon and his trials that I see that encouragement that we're speaking of here. And uh, so being, re- being set in a reality, we're all going to have these seasons. And what, it, what confounds the trial is when we just move away from God and think, man, he's not here. You know, that's what Satan plays those lies on us. So God is always here. We're the ones that move away. You know, we're just scooting away, scooting away. Might be a little bit, a little bit, but eventually we're the ones that are drawn away from God. God is always with us. And he sees all things. So this is what they were complaining of, verse 27, that, oh, God is not hearing our prayers. He's basically, we're being captive for 70 years. And, but God, uh, as we look in at chapter, uh, verse 20, 28, have you not known, have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. So here it is. At that time, they placed it on the the creator of earth, that area they were in. But he created the heavens and the earth, the stars. Okay? And that... Being the creator of the earth, he wasn't weary. He's not a weary God. He's not like us in the human flesh where we go, go, go. We're going to get tired. And as we study later, the youth are going to fall. When you're young, when I was in my 20s, 30s, then 40s, I got smarter. You Still, the body's going to break down. And this vessel that we live in finally is going to go. But his truth will always be. And so and so they were saying, and, and Isaiah was telling them, 
you experienced that. Their forefathers taught it. Don't you know? Can't you see that, you know, haven't you known and haven't you heard that the everlasting God, he doesn't get weary. And, and if he can build this whole earth and not be weary, how much more is he going to be capable of taking care of your problems? I mean, that's a win. He's got it. He's got it in his pocket. But on the other side to that is that we can't see it. We doubt. Because as, as, as Brother Sheridan was Christian, we can't see God. But we know he's here. We can't see the wind, but it blows. I was in Colorado, and it was windy. And, um, and seeing God's creation at night where there's no lights. You might need a flashlight. I was tripping, and, and then you look up, and you're just like, wow. These stars, the creator of the heavens and earth, and in Colorado, my little piece away from, you know, getting closer to nature and God, seeing his creation, rock formation, he created that. Rocks that, that were down here and play tectonics and all of a sudden they're standing straight up. God of the universe can do that. And he's sovereign. And so, so that, that's what went through the, the people. They were even doubting his sovereignty, and, you know, like he can't deal with this, uh, this issue that was going, this tr trials of captivity for 70 years. And as we go on, on chapter, uh, verse 29, he gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. And so the first step to that is that we need to acknowledge that we are weak. When we are weak, he's strong. But if we think we've got it, and in this, this area we live in, you got the Silicon Valley. And back there, they, had, they were prosperous. So it was basically do whatever you wanted, you know, be in sin or whatnot. And God is calling us all for repentance and repentance. And we fall short, and I'm one of them. I'm not going to stand up here today and preach. I, I have to take an inventory every day as I go. And the mistakes I do, I've got to make them right before man and before God. So, but it's a constant following through and being in his word and, and making things right. Uh, and knowing that we, we, when we live by the flesh, we're going to go down with the flesh. So um, they were, he does give us that strength when we were weak, and we need to admit that we were weak, when we are weak, he is strong and he's faithful. So that's to my uh, other point, is that he's always ready to hear and is always available. He's not a distant God from his people. He wants us to be in communion with him and be connected. And one of the the greatest strengths is, as, as we study at the end, is waiting upon the Lord and what that truly means. Uh, and so he gives power to all the weak, to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. So he gives us that strength to go through a trial whatever it may be, a circumstance, and he gives us that strength to, to go through it. And that's a supernatural thing. I, going back, I, 20 years ago, I had lymphoma myself. And when I was diagnosed, it, it was a shock. I remember leaving the hospital and uh, driving home after a bone marrow uh, they, they had to do the staging to see where this cancer was, and I was at stage two. And I remember driving home. I don't remember actually driving. I was in shock because I was told, thinking that, oh, it was just a cyst or whatever it was, lymph node right here. Um, 
But then something told me to tell the doctor, hey, what did the pathology read? And she said, oh, I'll be right back. And that same two weeks prior to that, that, that doctor did a surgery to my sister, and she had a lymph node on her neck. And she said, Claudio, don't worry. It'll be negative like your sister. She goes, put your shirt on. I'll be right back. 15 minutes later, uh, I am put my shirt on. And this is before medical electronics. It was all on charts. I, I said, what is, she, what is she doing? What is she doing? I opened the door. I looked down the hall. About 20 yards down, she's frozen reading my chart. And at that time, I believe God spoke to me. And um, two weeks prior of being awake at the surgery, it was a lymph note. And I said, oh, great, a lymph note. Um, I remember going back, sitting on the, that exam table and saying, Lord, whatever this is, walk it with me. You know, fear set in. I had all the human traits as, as, as these people and our forefathers and and what the Bible all speaks of. Uh, but I said, whatever it is, walk it with me. And he did. And 20 years later, praise God, I'm still here and, and serving him. And, you know, and they said, um, and then I meet my wife and all that is history. So God does hear our prayers and walk us through these trials that, they, that we all go through daily. Um, so... That strength that he gives us is a supernatural strength, and it, it's also based on his truth and his sovereignty. Uh, and, you know, we, we can't do it alone. And this is where, as a church, as the Thrive Groups in Daly City and in San Mateo, you know, the enemy wants us to go hide and cower down and go sit in a corner. But the Thrive Groups, or you have a brother or sister where you can share your, just be real. Not just play church. Come on Sunday and everything's good, and then you walk out of here and you're more miserable than when you first walked in here. This is what real church is, is to share each other's, you know. And and so as, as I was... I, I didn't share it earlier, but as we read these scriptures, think back of the trials that everyone here has gone through or are going through right now and see the, how God basically carries you so you can mount up and, and walk and not be rear, weary and faint. And as it says later, it, you know, like w wings of eagle. And... Um, and God has done it here. There's so many testimonies out here. But we can easily forget when we encounter another challenge or another trial. And the enemy tries to squash us and say, what about your God? So in, in uh, going further, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. And before the last scripture is because even the youth going in the flesh, ultimately, you're going to burn out. You're going to fizzle. It's not going to work. It, it's not going to work with the situations because you're trying to do it in your own strength instead of having God's strength. Um, oh, I like that. Thank you, brother. <laughs> I forgot. So I was out of... Uh, just to go back, we were in Colorado. We first get there, and there was no phone for four days. There's no internet. I was texting Pastor uh, Pastor Jason. It was just a little spot where it would work, and then it wouldn't work. Then we finally get everything running, and the last week we're ready to come home. But so um, so that's uh, that's what happened. But I. So when I was studying this, it's, it's just um, a knowledge to know that God walks with us. He carries us through it. And 
when that doubting or that hesitation and that trust factor slowly diminishes, it's where you got to draw back to them. And, and through prayer and through brothers and sisters coming together and praying, you're going to see God's hand walking with you and carrying you through. And so in closing, so, but those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So this scripture was to encourage the people that after the 70 years of captivity in Babylon, they were going to go back to Jerusalem. And that was a long walk. I did some research. That was 900 miles. So 900 miles and an average with families and children, elderly people. It was a four-day, a four, what's my note? A four-month track. So for four months, being out, traveling, to go back to your homeland after 70 years, a generation might not even know what was back there. They needed God's, God's truth and to say, hey, you know, but those who wait on the Lord, and what is that? What's it mean, wait on the Lord? Waiting on the Lord is an attitude of, of faith, to waiting on his help, trust to, to, that he is that hope, that comfort. That long journey home that they were facing, he was going to see them through that. And, uh, and as, it, as it goes on, that you, will, you shall renew your strength. Even though it's a fatigue going through the, the, this this 900-mile journey. And back then, we're talking now, we can travel from here to, you know, Colorado. It took me uh, driving 20, uh, 20, 28 hours with a truck and trailer. But that's 1,400 miles, you know. And it's 28 hours, let's say, stopping and getting gas and whatnot. But 900 miles back then was a trek. And... and um, so God was sovereign, and he encouraged his people. They were so excited. They were, freedom was at hand. And we can relate this back to coming to Christ, your day of salvation. We just celebrated baptism a month ago or so, okay? People coming in faith, waters of baptism. So that's exciting joy and all that. Then what happens? Life. Temptations happen. Satan, you're on the crosshairs. Sa Satan is going to go, okay, they gave their life to Christ. And praise the Lord that he can't take that away from you. But temptations come. And when that happens, we need to focus and for new believers, old believers, go back to Scripture, this 31. He shall renew our strength. And, and he, he will. And they shall mount up with wings like eagles. I preached on this when I was, uh, did some research when I was a youth pastor. Tip of a, from an eagle, from wing tip to tip, span is seven feet. Seven feet, and uh, last year, in the middle of October, I was in Colorado. We bought a place there years ago, a year and a half ago, and I wasn't quick enough to get my phone. There was two eagles. I come up, up this mountain, a, a, a pair of eagles with a yearling, and how they flew it was just amazing. It was on a crest of a hill. They just, they were just still. They weren't doing this. The wind just caught them. And I was so like, God didn't allow me to take a picture. But it's up here. And I wish I had that to put up there. I was so like, 
wow. You know, I was with somebody that drove me up. He goes, check that out. That's, and I was like, wow. So, and the eagle represents strength. And even the eagle, as it go, grows old, will lose its plumes. And as it does, new growth comes in and it gives it strength. Even the eagle, the, you know, and it's one of our, you know, our na- national birds. Um, and, and so as, uh, and they shall walk and not faint. You know, so we'll still go through this journey that God has ordained for us. And that's the, the positive side, that no matter what happens here today, what lies a week from now, a month from now, what, as I was, uh, you know, last couple of months, we've had, we've had earthquakes in Mexico, people losing their lives. We've had numerous hurricanes. Uh, Puerto Rico won't have power for four to six months, okay? I know people, friends uh, uh, in Florida that I checked in with, uh, they didn't have power for, for a week. Imagine not having power for six months. You know, so we're blessed. So we can pray for them. And they too, and I pray that God would supernaturally touch them and heal them and see them through this crisis uh, that we're, and there's more storms uh, coming on and uh, I never experienced a hurricane. I saw the aftermath of Katrina and that was plenty for me. But, so whatever, to close, my The joy that I have is that God is so trustworthy. He's the best friend you can have. You can have a human friend, they'll fail. Okay, and then you can regain that friendship back and make it right. That's the right thing to do before God. But God never fails. He's never ending. He's sovereign. We sang about it. You know, he is... He is there for his people. He's here for us now. He was there before the, he created the heavens and the earth. He's unchangeable, as we sang. He's going to be the way he was. He's never changing, and he's faithful and just. That's the encouragement that we need to have. You know, I've been a diabetic 40 years. I have an insulin pump right here in my pocket. 40 years, at the age of 14, I had to start injecting and stuff. And I thought, oh, this sucks, actually, you know? <laughs> you know? But thank God. You know, it's a thorn in my flesh. I'm still kicking. I'm still kicking. People are like, you've been a diabetic how long? 40 years, you should be dead, son, you know? <laughs> but, um, and I thank God for that. You know, I really do. No joke. Is it? Is it a a challenge? Yeah. I can't just eat what I want. There's a a, a process that I have to follow, just like following God's word. If we stick by that, that's the best thing for us, no matter what, what comes along. And so you can say, yeah, yeah, Claudio, yeah, it's all good, yeah, yeah, but you don't understand my situation. There's... No, I, I might not walk what whoever, whatever trial or tribulation you're going through, I might not have walked it, but there's others here that have, that God can show his sovereign, right? His sovereignty. So let's, um, so we're going to, I just want to leave that, don't leave here today with whatever trial you're going through. Uh, concern, the unknown, whatever fear you have that God is not hearing you or that you feel all alone, that's a, that's a big lie because God is with me. 
If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, God will never leave you. Nothing will snatch you from the love of God. Nothing. The enemy is a liar. He's the father of lies. Okay? He can say all this thing, but he's going to see you through this. And he's going to encourage you. And then you can mount up like wings of eagles. Like that scene that I saw, those eagles just catching a, a, a current and just like, just, I, I, the guy I was with, I was like, they're not even flapping. <laughs> they're not even flapping. And I'm like, and I was so like taken, I couldn't even get my phone out. And I put my phone out of here so I don't go too long for the time. So let me check. Okay, it's 11.02. So I don't mean to make fun of it. it got, sharing God's word is an honor. It's not a joke. But God also made humor, okay? So we, we can meet in the middle. But so as we, uh, as we close, think about whatever issues you may be going through or family members. God can heal that. God can uh, make it right. And God is so sovereign um, that we too will, will not grow weary and faint, and we can mount up uh, wings like eagles. That is a assurance that we have for many, many more days until uh, we see Jesus face to face. Can I hear an amen? amen? All right, let's pray. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for your truths, Lord. Thank you for loving us so that your people that you chose, the Jewish people, we also are invited as, uh, as new believers, believers, that uh, you love all that you've created. And so I pray, Lord, that we would uh, leave here with confidence, Lord, that uh, you are just, you are holy, and you are the helper. You help us through our trials. I pray that Anyone in here that is, doesn't know you, Father God, that uh, they would surrender their lives over to you. Uh, and those that believe in you, Jesus, that you would further their uh, communion with you, Lord, that you would walk with them through a trial. And, Father, that uh, your will would be done with all of us, Lord, and that all honor and glory would be given to you. We thank you for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and uh, close in a couple worship songs. Um, just wanted to kind of tack on real quick with what uh, Claudio was saying. Um, just uh, I'll try to keep it short. Sometimes I talk too much. No, but, no. But uh, uh, just... Uh, it was really good and, and really liked what Claudio said about just being real, being able to be real with each other and, and especially with God and, and bring your doubts to God and bring your sin to God. And um, he's, as we've been talking about this morning, he's trustworthy to to bring it to and then, and then renew your strength. And um, dealt with someone kind of earlier in the week, um, where I was at, um, who, a lady who was struggling with, um, just not being able to come to God because of, um, kind of the, some sin that had gone on in her life for a while and and not feeling like she was worthy to come to God and, and, uh, kind of in, in through a series of events, God kind of showed her, um, in scripture, um, where Jesus, um, comes to, I forget exactly where it is, I'm not good at referencing verses, but where Jesus is talking to a prostitute, and um, the scripture notes that she's a prostitute, and, and she's been doing some things, but uh, it notes that when Jesus comes to her, um, Jesus calls her daughter, and that's that's how he addresses her. Um, he doesn't come to her and say, you know, hey, prostitute. He comes to her and says, hey, daughter, and then 
he goes on to deal with the sin, but not in a in a punishing way, but in a way of you know wanting wanting the best for for his daughter and for someone who he created, and and that's how God is with us. And um, so, I just want to encourage you guys this morning, and talking to myself too, just all of us, um, just reemphasize what what Claudio said about uh, being able to come to God and being real. And I know that that's hard sometimes, um, but. God is is welcoming and and the enemy there there is a spiritual battle there is um, an enemy uh, we know that and and the enemy wants us to feel shame the enemy wants us to um, feel like you know we can't come to God um, because whatever we're doing is too bad and and God definitely wants to deal with the sin in our lives um, but um, you know, a lot of times I think that, um, as Claudia was saying, uh, we, we all want intimacy with God, and, and sometimes we don't have it because we, we block off parts of our lives, and especially um, sinful parts of our lives that we, we feel maybe too shameful to bring to God. So, um, so yeah, that's all I wanted to say just, uh, just this morning and, and on through the week. If, if that's not you, great. If that's you um, just struggling with shame or feeling like you can't bring some things to God or, or it's too bad to bring to God or he's mad at you. Um, just know that, that that's a lie from the enemy and, and that God definitely wants to convict you and, and, and bring you out of that sin. Um, he doesn't want you to stay in that sin. He's not okay with that sin, but he's not, um, he's a good father. He's not a punishing father. And he one of the main reasons he wants to bring us out of that sin is because it's the best thing for us and and he's created us for intimacy with him and that that's um, harboring non-intimacy. So uh, so just remember that this morning and, and just as we worship, um, just if, if you want to pray with someone or um, struggling with that, you know, that's why we're all here. We're, we're the church. Uh, we can pray with each other. Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll go ahead and place I, I just want to pray that 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 you'd be free to worship where the, where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom you know a freedom to to lift your hands to pray to with with one another to sing to to be real you know and i of course god is everywhere it doesn't have to be a place but we do pray over this place and we're here we're gathered so god is everywhere so we've asked that he be here and as we worship through the second set i just want to encourage you um, just, just to, to be free before the Lord, to, to, if you, if you want to, to raise up your hands, stand and sing and pray. He is worthy. <laughs> he is worthy. Uh, the, the angels praise him 24 seven. And I don't know if you've ever been praising the Lord just in a, in a moment where, where you just feel like you can't sing it enough where you can't be more repetitive. There's been moments where I've just felt like the more I repeat the actually, actually the more I want to repeat those words, cause God is worthy and it's not some 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 greatest hits top 10 whatever it's just god i want to praise your name so um and, and if you're visiting or new here feel no pressure to give as the bags come by um but that's a chance to respond to the lord tangibly about what he wants to do in and through us as a body we also have an agape box in the back if you want to to give uh through there at any time later um as as we're fellowshipping later uh, feel free to do that as well and so father we we pray, God, that you would be glorified in this place. Lord, we thank you for our brother Claudio, Lord. As your word says, you give us living epistles, God. You give us lives that we can see, God, and we see 
Claudio's life, Lord, we, we, we know him, we love him, we see that you, you picked him up from the miry clay and you set his feet upon a rock, Lord God, and your faithfulness has been so good in his life, Lord, and I thank you that we could hear about it, God, that we could um, shake his hand, God, that we could hear the words from the source of, of what you've done in his life, God, and so we thank you for the verses that you put on his heart, God, and as we gather here, as we're here, Lord, God, that we would give you all of our praise, God, that there wouldn't be a, a, a spirit of fear, God, a spirit of apprehension, God, but one of power, of love, and of a sound mind, God, because that's what you have given us, God, that the mind of Christ would be in us, Lord, that we would be free to worship, Lord, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, God, and we pray that your spirit would be here, and we pray all this in Jesus' name. can take a dying man, raise him up to life again, can heal a wounded soul, can make us white as snow, or can fill the emptiness, or can mend our broken man, broken man. Mighty, awesome, wonderful is the Holy Cross. Where the Lamb lay down His life to lift us from the fall. Mighty. Father's love can lead the wayward home, can melt a heart of stone, can free the guilty ones, can save and overcome, can overcome. Mighty, awesome, wonderful. Oh, 
power of mighty is power of mighty is power of Open up my eyes in one 
God, we just uh, thank you for this time, and uh, we just pray um, that we just continue to to um, grow, grow more in, in our intimacy with you, and and uh, we would learn to um, just walk with you, um, just as the song says. It would be um, so close that we would be able to um, just hear your heartbeat for us and and for the world, and and then um, that as we as we see your love for us, that um, then that as we're, we're your body, uh, as we just sang, that um, we would go out into the world and, and show, show that love and, and show love to, to all those around us, whoever we come in contact with, um, just especially with, with all the strife that's going on in, in our world right now, that we would, um, we would show your love and, and be, be peacemakers and, and be uh, mediators and, and not not be um, participating in in the back and forth in in uh, in just arguing with people, but that we would be um, be those that that show your love and, and your heart um, to the world, um, just whether it be um, someone who loves you or, or someone um, who's struggling or um, just whatever it is that uh, um, from from the person who's who's being persecuted to, um, to even someone who's a racist, that um, your love is for, for all of humanity. And, and uh, we just pray that we would, um, we would show that love as, as you do. Um, and we just pray as we um, continue this day with each other that um, you continue to, to speak to us and, and just be in our interactions with each other. And um, just pray as, uh, as Claudia said, um, that we would be able to be real with you and be real with each other and, and bear each other's burdens and and just do do life together as as you've called us to do. And we pray this in your name. Amen. Amen.